Happy Wednesday morning to you, Cross Point Alliance Church. Hope that you're well resting in Jesus. I am actually in my office on July 4th. We're going to be having a picnic here shortly. Hope to see a lot of you. Of course, by the time you get this, it'll be Wednesday morning. Uh, but anyway, trust that you're in a good spot today. Uh, I want to read to you a passage from, this would be my second to last video, uh, passage from Revelation chapter 1, one that I've always appreciated. Um, pick it up in verse 12. I'll just read a few verses and uh, make a couple comments. So here we go. Um, Revelation 1, starting in verse 12. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun shining in full strength. Gotta love this passage. It's quite amazing. Um, I actually preached this passage here October of 2018, but um, I've always liked Revelation 1, 2, and 3 because of the, the revelation of Christ in his splendor. So the Jesus of the Gospels is the same Jesus of the Apocalypse, which is the Greek rendering of revelation means the unveiling same person but we see a different part of him you know kind of like jesus the lion and the lamb so he's both of these but uh, you see different parts of christ sometimes in uh different times and so i like to think of it this way that um, Jesus is the perfect apostle, the perfect prophet, the perfect evangelist, the perfect shepherd or teacher, and the perfect perf perfect shepherd and the perfect teacher, pastor or teacher. He's all of those. Usually we get a little bit of one or two of those. He's all of those at level infinity. When he speaks to the seven churches, I think he has his prophet hat on, kind of. Uh, he's the prophet that Moses said in Deuteronomy 18 that he was coming someday. There'd be a prophet that would rise up in Israel. Jesus is that guy, that prophet. So um, he's not in this passage. Um, he's not so much... Um, well, I don't know that little children would run up to him and want to sit on his lap. In fact, John fell at his feet as a dead man when he saw him this way. So that just underscores kind of the gravity of who he is. And more specifically, this is how Jesus reveals himself to the church or the churches, the seven churches of Asia Minor. And I've often wondered, I'm, probably you have to, like if Jesus were to send an email <laughs> or... Zoom with a church along the lines of Revelation 2 and 3 and specifically like cross point like what would he say and I don't think that's something you just fill in uh in a in a moment um but I do think that Jesus does speak to churches if if we're listening and I would encourage Crosspoint. Now, I realize my voice is growing dimmer by the day, but I, I think that Crosspoint is not going to be in a turn. I think Crosspoint's already in a turn. And this is an incredible opportunity for the church corporately. And I think that's kind of how it works, corporately to listen and engage the risen Christ and say, you know, what, what are you saying? Um, just a couple of more specifics here. Um, the uh, verse 20 of chapter 1 says, The seven stars that you saw in my right hand, uh, the seven golden lamps, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. I've always wondered, you know, who are these angels? Um, most interpreters 
have that I've checked out and say those are more literal angels. Those are not human beings, which adds an interesting dimension to that. Um, I think geographically, you can make the case there are angels. Michael is watching over Israel. It's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on that. But to each of the churches, Jesus says, to the angel of the church of whatever. And then there's an aspect of his person that is spoken over that congregation that is significant to that, to that local church. And then he speaks to the church. He says the message to the angel of the church of whatever. But then at the end of each one of those, he says, and this is, Jesus says this stuff in the Gospels too. He says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then there's usually an attending promise to the one who hears. Anytime you hear Jesus say to him who has an ear, what he's doing, that's like code language to the humble, that to those who want to hear, and if you're listening to this, that would be you, right? To those who want to, if you have a capacity to listen, um, the message is for you. It, he said that in the Gospels a lot because his words would go past some people and would lodge in the hearts of some and completely go over the heads of others. So just, it's Jesus, he speaks in code a lot. And he actually said he spoke in parables to hide truth from some and to get through uh, uh, to others. Um, so I would just encourage the the church at this time. This is a great opportunity to slow down and to listen, to inquire, and to ask. And I don't think this is one of those dinner prayer type things because when Jesus thinks of the church, he doesn't think of an individual. It's a corporate consciousness to him. It's just one organism or a, a like it's like a single personality consisting of individuals. But it, he just he's addressing the church as a group, not um, um, not as he's not addressing a subset per se. So, which means that when Jesus speaks to a church, he's speaking to the entire body, not just um, one or two. And the way I see it, anyway, is that. It is the responsibility of the church collectively to listen. And that can be difficult work. It can be difficult to hear God's voice sometimes. I think um, there are a lot of people, you probably run into these guys, they're on the news, they want to make a quick buck, but they'll tell you what God is saying. And um, it's like they're selling something, uh, but to actually discern God's voice is a beautiful thing. And for a church to corporately hear from Jesus and to get some direction and some vision for the future, which I think, um, I think, I think Crosspoint is ripe for that. I think they're ready. I think you guys are ready, uh, but it's hard work and it's definitely not something to, um, to treat with um, um, a cavalier posture, which I, I know that we would not do that. But um, so that's my, kind of my encouragement is one, Jesus reveals himself to the church in an entirely different way, okay? Like commander in chief, okay? And Jesus still speaks. He does, he speaks through his word, but I think there's a sense in which he actually speaks into the life of a congregation. If that congregation is actually asking to hear, um, he, he shows up, uh, he will show up. Uh, and on the contrast, I think this is, I think this is true. I think we can say this, that when someone doesn't have ears at an individual level, or even at a corporate level, or if we're not uh, we're not listening or we're not humble, then his words will pass by us. They're still his words. It's just that they won't, like the frequency won't catch it. So um, yeah, um, I do want to encourage everybody. Um, 
d direct questions. To your, your elders are here. They are leading the church. Hebrews chapter 13 says, obey your leaders, and they want to give a good account for you with joy. So uh, just direct questions to your elders, and uh, they're here to serve you. They're here for the good of this fellowship. So um, let them work for you. Let them work for you. So let me bless you now, Crosspoint, okay? Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We'll see you soon. Bye.